my response to this crazy world that we are living in right now. There's so many things that have happened in the last four years. Like, we just can't even process how large these problems are that we're facing. It felt a little bit like I should run, <laughs> but I didn't know what I was running from yet, and I didn't know if it was real. I knew I needed to make um, something as a response to what in the hell was going on. The silver ball was one of the first ideas. It reflects and distorts the world around it. It can be the stand-in for anything that feels out of our control or overwhelming. And it had to be terrifying. It had to feel heavy. And um, it had to be able to flatten humans. I wanted to make some kind of a dent in the anxiety a lot of people have been feeling. That's the whole point of art, is to be a mirror for people. I, I truly believe art can save the world. I wanted to remind people about the game that we're all participating in. Just subconsciously, that idea, I thought of the, the pinball machine. It was just like, perfect. Every morning that we wake up and decide to leave our beds, it's a willful action of participation in life. A game. The classic Hollywood aesthetic that we have a vivid collective memory of is very much modern mythology. By using archetypes and myths, we are able to get perspective. We're able to see that we've been through this before, or some kind of this before. This is not the first challenge human beings have faced, and it won't be the last. It's about resilience, too. I wanted to create a world that was clearly fictional, but also reflective of our society. I didn't think depicting it as we actually live it was the right approach because we've seen enough of what we're going through. I wanted to work with Katherine Waterston on this because she has this amazing ability to be a chameleon. She just embodies the role that she's playing. Not all great actresses have this ability to disappear in the character. She's gentle and kind and funny and slightly awkward. I wanted to be someone that people would naturally want to follow through the film. So Catherine is a nice balance to the more absurd characters. Great tragedy always comes with comedy. I think they're always intertwined. It's like part of the reason that we're, we all continue to want to be here. The thing that always makes me feel optimistic about the future is people, human connection. That's also why I like to use practical effects when I make my work, because the physicality of it represents people that actually built those set pieces. People connect with that. And this work, Run, is very much about the human heart and the subconscious way that we connect. Time is a very important factor in Run. It's almost the way that you might remember a dream. You remember certain images and feelings, but it doesn't need to be linear. Everything is being said that needs to be said. The music partially inspired the film. My husband did this collaboration with Ellen Reed. So one day when I was taking Francis, my five-year-old son, to school, I asked him if he wanted to listen to Ellen Reed's opera. And immediately I was floored by the emotional uh, response that I was having. It's exactly everything that I've been feeling. And then he started asking me what was happening in Run. Every day I would explain a little bit more about what was going on, but obviously I was making it up. By the end of the week, I had a movie that I was gonna make for him. That's why I said for Francis at the end. Making Run has been somewhat of a catharsis. Whatever was creating those emotions in me holds a little less power.